Did you ever wonder which scale is the most used in jazz? Maybe you've been thinking about what scales you have to practice the most. In jazz there are a lot of possibilities to play outside or play really strange scales. But to play as the really great masters you need to focus on just one scale. And this is of course the major scale. Take a look at these standards. Everything you play in these standards are mostly major scale. And when you listen to John Coltrane or Dexter Gordon or any of the other greats, they are mostly playing major scales with a few embellishments. Let's get into what major scales to apply where on jazz standards. The major scale can be divided into seventh chords. On every step of the scale you have one chord. And to make the analysis between keys much easier, you give it the number between one and seven. And the absolute best way to understand your jazz standards more is finding out what key are they in. The first thing to do is play the melody and on the chord where the melody ends, this is the key, mostly. The next step would be compare the chords of the tune to the major key you have just decided the tune is in. And you actually see that most of the chords of the tune fit into the major scales. This means that you can apply the major scale and these chords to the tune on these points. Then there are the chords that does not fit. The dominant chords that do not fit in the key are secondary dominants. And other chords are often related in some other way to the secondary dominants and there are definitely exceptions. In Perdido, the bridge have four different dominant chords. When you see a dominant chord, it's a capital letter with a seven. And these dominant chords are all the fifth <laughs> of one of the major scales. So we need to find out where the fifth belongs. E7 is the fifth of A major. A7 is the fifth of D major. D7 is the fifth of G major. So when you are playing the bridge of Perdido, you are actually switching the key four times. You are playing the chords and you are playing the scales where this chord is the fifth degree and playing that scale. If you need to see all this theoretical stuff in writing, please go to my Patreon and download the lesson manual. All examples, all text is written out. Looking at the A parts of Pedido, there's an A7 there, and we get a small disagreement between the bridge A7 and the A7 in the A parts. The A7 in the A parts are going to D minor, you see, and the A7 in the bridge is going to a D7. And since we're in C major, there is no A7 in C major. We need to borrow the A7 from somewhere. And what we just did, we just saw that the A7 was from D major. So actually, we do borrow that A7 from D major and adding it to the A parts. What we want to borrow is that leading tone, leading from C sharp to D in the scale. So when we borrow that C sharp in the A7 chord, we got what we want. For the rest we want to keep the chords and the scales as close to our main key as possible. This means we take out that F sharp and only using an F and we are of course adding that C sharp. In the lesson manual on Patreon I have added all the basic chords and basic scales to the tunes I'm talking about here. Find the link to Patreon in the description. Looking at Autumn Leaves we see we are finishing on an A minor chord and we do find an A minor chord in the C major scale. Now the tricky part is sometimes you have to look for an A minor chord look for the parallel minor. A minor is the parallel minor to C major. When you're looking at the chords of Autumn Leaves, you see that most of the chords also fit in the scale of C major, so A minor. So what I do as first step, check the chords, see what scale they fit into. When a tune is in minor, you still fit it into a major key, but look at the parallel minor key. Again, some of the chords fall outside the C major scale, the A minor scale. In C major, there's no E7, but in A major, there's an E7 on the fifth degree. And when you play any basic stuff on any tune, you probably want to stay as close to the key as you possibly can. And from A major to A minor, you only add that G sharp leading to A. You do not add that F sharp or that C sharp. Then there's this part in autumn leaves. 
that's pretty tricky. The G sharp seven and the F sharp seven, they're capital letters with a seven. So they're the fifth degree of a major key. The G sharp belongs to the C sharp key. And the F sharp belongs to the B major key. And then you have to trust me in this one. This is far out. The G minor chord belongs to a 2-5 progression. G minor, C7. Where the C7 is a tritone substituted dominant going to that B half diminished chord. The C7 is again tritone substituted to an F sharp 7 chord leading to that B half diminished chord. But that G minor, C7, they belong to F major. So we are taking that G minor chord out of F major. I've tried to find the most simple way to get the chords and the scales and the key together. And I know there's a lot of untouched materials, all the alterations, all the extensions and all the substitute chords you can add. I've gotten into many extensions and many alterations in other videos and you have to check those out. When you're checking this material out, I would really recommend you to check out my solo manuals. There are 50 to 100 pages manuals that take you through the chords, the scales and how to solo over many of these standards I have mentioned here today. There are links in the description to all the solo manuals. Take a step further and check out how Coltrane plays on dominance. And there's so much more going on on minor dominance. Check out these two videos. Play music, have fun.